Uh, thanks, Richard, for that um, introduction. So, um, we as a human race in the Western world, we've actually been indoctrinated to be over consumers by incredibly successful advertising and marketing. And we're consuming excess energy or calories at an unsustainable rate and actually at a cost to society. So diet is the leading contributor to the burden of disease for Australians. And it is actually one of the risk factors that if it was modified, it would save the most lives. So overweight and obesity, type 2 diabetes, kidney disease, um, some cancers, even joint back problems, dental decay, they're all related to diet. So we are what we eat. But what we are eating in Australia is actually costing the economy more than $60 billion per year in premature death, disability, and broader cost to society. So we're actually in an obesity epidemic. Uh, six in 10 Australians are overweight and one in four children. And so the, you know, the image of Australians as being fit and healthy and lean has shifted to one of us being actually big bellied. And uh, unfortunately, um, this is becoming the stereotype in regional and remote Australia where some of the poorest Australians are actually bearing the brunt of the obesity epidemic. So poor diet is contributing to the excessive burden of disease experienced by Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people in remote communities, as Richard said. So, oh, whoops, sorry, <laughs> there's two slides on here, so it's a little bit confusing. Okay, that's the one. So Professor Boyd Swinburne argues that this global obesity epidemic is actually um, the consequence of market failure. So market failure exists when the cost of a commodity is no longer indicative of its true cost and that it's no longer of good to society. So our food market actually favours foods that are high in calories, sugar, salt um, and fat as these foods. And, and we call these foods the discretionary foods. That's, they actually don't have a, a, a part to play in our diet in terms of trying to get all the nutrients that we need. But these foods, they do play a part because they're highly palatable and they're desirable to consumers. And they can, you know, most of them are packaged, they can be easily transported, and they've really got high um, profit margins on them. So they're also very profitable. So there is obviously profit in overconsumption, but at what cost to society, to families, and to the individual? So is this a, if this is a problem, the solution is that we as consumers, we just have to try a bit harder. Right, we have to be a little bit more disciplined. We have to not eat the, or we have to eat the healthy foods and try to avoid the less healthy foods. Um, but it's not that easy. Our food environment really shapes um, our food choices. So we as consumers are highly receptive to price, um, to convenience, to marketing and advertising. And for many years, we've actually focused on the food manufacturer to have the solution. Uh, to the obesity epidemic. But what about retailers? What about supermarkets, corner stores, remote community stores? Surely they have a role to play because it's in these kinds of settings where we as consumers have the most interaction um, with um, the food and where our senses are always teased, kind of tantalised, bombarded with information um, to maximise profit but also to make us as uh, consumers feel like we've got the best value for our money. So innovation arises where problems seem the greatest. Um, and like we talked about, you know, there's a, there's a high burden of disease in remote communities, but there's also a lot of innovation that happens in this context. So up until the last decade, the issue for retailers in remote communities was actually just trying to get enough stock um, to stores and make sure that there were enough perish perishables, particularly fruit and vegetables, between the deliveries of food to the store. But over the last decade, the product range has more than quadrupled in community stores, and um, there's 12 times more shelf space in these stores, but 70% of this is those kinds of discretionary foods, you know, high in fat. And this is probably not that different to our supermarkets um, in urban centres either. But 53%, as you can see on this pie chart here, of calories purchased through stores are from discretionary foods. And sugary drinks actually contributes about 25% of the food spend. So this is a major concern and community members and leaders are actually looking for the store 
to improve health. Why? Because fact one, most of the stores in remote communities are actually owned by the community and they have a store board that governs the store. And fact two, most of the food that is, um, is sourced in remote communities or consumed in remote communities is provided through the store. So these store boards actually have a lot of power to make policy for their stores. And this policy obviously has the potential to really impact on health. But good policy needs evidence to inform its development and to monitor and evaluate its effectiveness. Hence, our innovation. So to support store owners make good policy, we have developed FoodFox. So FoodFox is a powerful web-based platform and it transforms store sales data into visual reports. And when I say we, there's certainly a big team that's behind this. Anthony Gumper is here tonight, Rachel Janke, Megan Ferguson, Dr. Emma McMahon and Dr. Tom Witchley. So every food product sold in community stores, uh, when it's uploaded into this database, is then, then linked by a code to the Australian Government Nutrient Database and the food groups that align with the Australian Dietary Guidelines. So the reports, the reports provide two key data. Firstly, they show for each of the food groups the number of serves purchased um, at a population level in the community and they compare these to national recommendations and to that of all remote stores. So there's that benchmarking that can start to happen between stores. Secondly, they show trends in the sales of key food groups. So a store manager or a store board can kind of see how things are tracking over time. And they show not just the healthy foods, there's been a big emphasis on healthy foods in the past, but also on discretionary foods, what's happening, how much soft drink is being sold, how much confectionery. So this is the type of big data that is actually used by business analysts. You know when you use your, um, is it flybys card, rewards cards, that type of thing? So people use this um, information to inform marketing decisions. But in the remote community context, these data, which actually belong to the store owners, um, you know, we're working with them um, to help them inform store policy to improve the community's health but also to set goals and monitor progress towards healthier food purchasing. So we think that it's actually helping remote communities regain control again over their food supply. And just to share a story, um, these data are pretty powerful. So an earlier version of Food Fox um, was used by a nutritionist some years ago. Uh, she was employed by Yana Per Health. Um, and, this informa and she used... Um, as I said, the earlier version of Food Fox to provide information on foods contributing the most to sugar. So she was asked to provide this information by the Community Council of Armatur and the APY Labs. And based on the reports presented, the council put in place a policy to remove the three top selling soft drinks from the store. And over a 12 month period, this resulted in 25% reduction in soft drink sales and actually total drink sales did not change. So these kinds of strategies may be not impacting on business viability or the bottom line in terms of profits. And it resulted in a reduction of two tonnes of sugar sold through the store and no black market arose. So 32 stores are, are so far participating with us um, in Food Fox. There is uh, an increasing momentum among store boards to shift, to shift to healthy food retailing. And imagine the impact on health as more and more store boards make policy aided by Food Fox with the health of the community a priority. Um, so, yeah, so I think, you know, to finish, I think remote Indigenous Australian community store stores are really leading the way. Um, we're collaborating with some researchers um, down south with Deakin University who are starting to do some of this work with um, the hospitals like the Alfred Hospital concealing soft drinks so consumers you know, choose healthier drinks rather than less healthy drinks and also um, so they're, they're doing some work with IGA supermarkets. So you know, this, this I think started with that work with Amateur community um, and is really providing some, some ideas and some innovation um, to transform store environments, not just in remote communities, but hopefully um, to other places around. And, but more, most importantly in remote communities, um, you know, this is helping to turn around the burden of the disease experienced by people in these communities. So, thank you.